Hey guys, today we're finally getting a chance to get behind the wheel of the new 2022 Toyota Tundra. Today we're in a limited Crew Max. So we've got the big rear seating area and a five and a half foot bed. This has a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 that makes 389 horsepower, 479 pound feet of torque. That engine is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. We do have four wheel drive in this Tundra. We have our selectable options down here for two high, four high, and four low. This truck also has the very desirable TRD off-road package. So that means we get multi-terrain select and crawl control along with a few different off-road drive modes. So that's pretty cool. We'll check that out a little bit later. You get a TRD logo on the shifter, this neat little red TRD stop start button for the engine. Let's walk you around this new Tundra, show you what it looks like inside and out. And we'll take it for a drive and give you guys some first impressions on what it's been like to live with this thing this week. So first things first, exterior appearance. You can see we've got these large 20 inch wheels in this TRD off-road package. These are 265-60R20 Falcon Wild Peak AT3W tires, AT3WA. So this is kind of a more highway oriented uh, all-terrain tire, but still not too bad, about 32 and a half inches in diameter. I've seen some of these new Tundras on big 35 or 37 inch tires, and they look fantastic. As it sits, these wheels look a little bit small on this stock truck. As we come around to the front end, we've got this massive and slightly controversial front grille. This has the TRD grille, so it's blacked out in the center, and we have this kind of silver surround. On the TRD off-road pack Tundra, that is painted and I think, in my opinion, it looks a lot better than this spec here. So, I don't know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I'm personally not a huge fan of the front end of this truck. I think it's a little bit too ostentatious, a little bit too over the top. The rest of it, though, looks pretty good. You can see we've got some rock rails on the side here, frame mounted, only about a $600 option for these, pretty good value. Coming around to the back, actually, this is one of my favorite angles of this new Tundra. Kind of looks like a Baja truck, especially with the taillights, that little almost like lip to the rear of the tailgate. It looks pretty sharp. We've got our trailer hitch down here. This can tow a little over 11,000 pounds, 11,120 pounds in this spec. Let's take a look in the bed. Payload capacity is about 1,800 pounds, a little bit over. We have this plastic bed protector, a little bit of a bed carpet down here. Over to the right here, we've got our plug outlet, 120 volts, 400 watts. You can see we've also got a couple of bed lights in the back and a few tie down hooks. Toyota keeps it simple with the bed in this Tundra, like they always have. No gimmicky, silly looking tailgates that do all sorts of different origami shapes. Uh, just a standard tailgate, that's okay. We've got a little step down here that comes out, gives you easy access into the bed. One, two, you're done. Kick that back up under there. There's your exhaust tip, pretty big diameter too, that looks nice. Let's take a look in the back seat see what we look like in this crew max cab so compared to some other options in this class from the domestic market manufacturers this is actually not as big of a back seat space and compared to the previous generation tundra it's shrunk a little bit too i still think it's absolutely massive back here there's tons of legroom uh maybe side to side not as much space but you even get some storage underneath the seat bottoms to put stuff so that's useful Let's see we've got our toyota first aid kit down there couple other lockable accessories, stuff like that. You have a nice grab handle to get into the cab. Tons of legroom and space for me to stretch out in the back of this Tundra. I am a very happy camper back here. Little armrest, some cup holders right here. A nice grippy surface to put your phone or keys, a couple USB ports, and another 120 volt, 400 watt plug outlet. I think the interior of this new Tundra is the real highlight for me. I love this cabin. It's attractively styled. The steering wheel looks great, feels really nice in hand. And we've got this massive 14 inch touchscreen that's standard on limited and higher trims. There's a lot to go over on the front. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's hop out and show you under the hood in the engine bay of this 3.5 liter V6. This gets pretty good fuel economy compared to the previous generation Tundra, which was about 14 miles to the gallon combined. This averages 19 MPG combined. 
and this trim about 17 in the city 22 on the highway not too shabby this does not have the hybrid system that's on a higher trim i'm excited to test that when that press vehicle becomes available plenty of power though from the space engine uh, again, it works really well with a 10-speed auto. We'll show you guys what that's like on the road here in a minute. All right, so let's talk touchscreen. This thing is absolutely huge, 14 inches. Um, really, the only thing I don't like about it is that it's kind of missing a home button. To get back to the Toyota native app, you pretty much just have to go into CarPlay and hit the Toyota icon in the screen. Hopefully you guys can see this reasonably well. We're getting a little bit of reflection here. This is a high gloss touchscreen. I do kind of wish Toyota would make some of their touchscreens a, a matte finish so they don't have as much of a reflective property to them. But still, again, just a minor complaint. The screen itself does a beautiful job with uh, responsiveness. It's very simply laid out. It's very easy to use. Uh, really, there isn't a whole lot to do in here besides Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those are wireless because you have so many physical controls and buttons. Ergonomically, this truck is beautifully laid out. All of your climate controls are physical controls right here. You can easily adjust fan speed, auto climate, cooled and heated seats. We have a heated steering wheel over to the left here, which you can leave on, and uh, that way it turns on automatically when you turn on the car next. Easy gauge display brightness adjustment down here. Physical controls on the steering wheel. All of these are really nicely differentiated too, so you can kind of tell what you're pressing without having to look down off the, keep, take your eyes off the road. In the middle here, we have a pretty familiar looking center display, little digital gauge cluster here, showing you your navigation, your audio, your tire pressures. You've got some off-road angle screens too, uh, but you know, pretty standard stuff for any Toyota. And I like that this actually has analog gauges. No big gimmicky, fully digital gauge cluster here. These are easy to read, simple, uh, simply laid out. I've got our coolant temperature, oil pressure, battery voltage, fuel level, tachometer and speedometer, done. I love it, perfect. We get a volume knob, big honk and volume knob. Unfortunately, no scroll knob, but I guess you can kind of work around that with your favorites. Parking brake is right there, right next to the shifter. That will automatically come on when you put it in park if you're on an incline, which is nice. You've got your traction control, camera view, quick access button there where you can kind of scroll around and see around the truck. That's neat. And speaking of camera views, we have a ton of different options here. We've got a <laughs> rotating line for the, both the tow hitch and the direction of the vehicle. You can see a forward facing camera that's super high res, high wide angle, side views for a little bit of off-road rock crawling if you wanna see around your front wheels see you over the bed you've got this camera right there and you can have these automatically switch depending on whether you're in drive or reverse and a great 360 cam really nice use of the screens real estate too for these cameras down here we've got our two high four high four low controls all of our drive modes sport normal and eco um, they kind of perform about how you would expect them to we've got our chi wireless charging down here I've been having a few issues with this this week. It hasn't been charging my phone consistently or as consistently as I would like it to, unfortunately. It's just kind of mostly down there flashing all the time. And with my iPhone 13 on a silicone Apple case, I've been struggling to get it to charge, but that's okay, minor complaint. We've got our center console here with a couple USB ports, lots of neat storage solutions. This slides back so you have easy access and there are buttons for both drivers and passengers to open this up. Really spacious, nice use of uh, real estate down here too. No sunroof in this truck, but one carryover feature we have from previous generation Tundras is you can roll down the rear window, just like in the 4Runner. How cool is that? Also makes for a nice quick way to clean off that rear window. Very useful if you're putting items in the truck bed that are a little bit longer and you can run them into the cab. You know, lots of versatility, a lot of options you can do with that roll down rear window. Pretty cool. Otherwise, I think that pretty much covers this interior. Got a place to put your sunglasses up here. Nice sliding visors. Those look pretty good. Little mirror. 
Oh, and speaking of mirrors, we have a fully digital rear view mirror, which actually shows us a pretty good view out of the back compared to the actual mirror. Those headrests give you a little bit of a, a limited view out of the back window. All right, I think let's take this Tundra for a drive and give you guys an idea of what this thing is like on the road. Roads may be icy, drive with care. It looks like we're getting a little bit of snow starting here, so hopefully it won't get too bad. All right, so starting off in this Tundra, this 10-speed auto is super smooth. Very close ratio gearing, so it's gonna be doing a lot of shifting, but the torque from the 3.5 liter is really well mated to this 10-speed automatic. I like the way this transmission and engine combo drive a lot. Do I miss the V8? Yes. As an enthusiast, that 5.7 liter V8 sounded fantastic. It had awesome performance. That was just a great engine. It's a bit of a shame that Toyota has gotten rid of the V8 in the Tundra, but here we are. This is a much more fuel efficient powertrain for this truck. And, uh, you know, a lot of the other competitors still offer V8 engines in their full size pickups. All of that said, I think Toyota has done a really nice job tuning this powertrain. Throttle tipping is smooth and progressive. The gear shifts are very seamless. And it makes kind of an interesting noise. See what I mean? An interesting sound. In the sport mode there. Handling is about what you would expect out of a full-size truck. Be a little bit better than the previous generation with that multi-link rear suspension. Wind noise is kept at a minimum. I like the brake pedal feel in this new Tundra. Definitely an improvement over the previous generation. Feels more SUV car-like. Getting on the highway, this is a very comfortable truck to drive. Ride quality is nice and soft. Um, despite this being able to tow over 11,000 pounds, I'm not bouncing around as much as I am used to in a truck like this. It feels pretty good. We have Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, uh, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, active steering assist. Does a pretty good job keeping you centered in the line between the lines, and uh, the radar, radar adaptive cruise control does a nice job negotiating traffic and uh, different speed differentials between. Uh, cars in front of you and slower vehicles when passing. You can easily turn off your lane centering just by holding this button and uh, you can disable your cruise control very easily too. Love that these are all physical controls right here on the steering wheel. I don't even have to look down to see what I'm pressing which is great. I have pretty good visibility all around me too. I like these big mirrors. I like the digital rear view mirror. I feel like I can still rest my arm on the side of the door here. This door pillar isn't so high that it's uncomfortable. And I really like the shape of the steering wheel. It's just so nice to be able to rest my arms on both armrests and hold the wheel right from this bottom section. This is a torquey engine. You can hear we've got a few rattles from this interior. Fortunately, this, uh, this whole centerpiece has been rattling around quite a bit this week. It seems to reduce slightly after the cabin has warmed up, but you know, it's been 20 degrees, 19 degrees during the day. All sorts of rattles tend to crop up in vehicles when it gets cold out. No complaints with regards to horsepower in this new Tundra. A little bit of wind noise when you get up to speed, but overall, this truck drives really well. It's easy to live with, it's easy to drive and place on the road. It is massive, but I've gotten used to it pretty quickly and pretty easily this week, 
Uh, On-road driving manners are really nice, and this should have a ton of off-road capability too, with the crawl control system, the locking electronic rear differential. The shocks on this are a little bit on the softer side too, which I appreciate. For off-road driving, this should be a really nice truck to live with. I like the driving position too. Tons of adjustability with this tilting and telescoping steering wheel. These seats seem very comfortable as well. Heated and cooled in this limited trim. Oh, and by the way, this starts at around $52,000 uh, MSRP for the limited as tested with all the options. I'll include everything in the description, about 60 grand. So definitely not cheap, but the Tundra has always been a little bit on the pricier side. I think Toyota loyalists will appreciate the reliability and simplicity from this truck. handles pretty well. probably all ice in here, but let's just humor ourselves really quickly and see how this handles off-road. Put us into four high. Pretty good, pretty comfy. about all we can do here in Michigan in this area. Not a lot of good off-roading around me. <laughs> oh boy, back into two-wheel drive, struggling for grip. I've got to say these Falcon Wild Peaks are not great in the ice and snow. What else? We have a JBL sound system in this Tundra. About a $500 upgrade. Not sure it's entirely worth it. It's pretty bass heavy, but otherwise it sounds okay. Let's do a quick sound system test. We've got volume and track controls down here on the steering wheel. that gives you guys a quick idea of what that sounds like. Not too bad. <laughs> this has been a really easy truck to live with all week and I think probably one of the highlights for me is just how ergonomically and user-friendly this interior space is. 
I love the direction that Toyota has gone with this new interior. I think it looks great, it feels modern, it feels stylish and updated. And coming from the old Tundra, which was really getting and feeling old in the tooth, this feels like a really nice direction for Toyota's trucks going forward. I love all the use of physical buttons and controls. I would like a home button and I would like a scroll button for my track selection, but otherwise, I think this interior is great. This, this touchscreen, really high res, really beautiful display, pretty responsive too, so no complaints there. Um, I think it brings a really nice modern feel and flavor to this new Tundra. Let's pull off here and uh, give you guys one last look at this. And I think that'll pretty much wrap everything up on this truck. Complaints, a few little rattles here and there from the interior, but otherwise, a pretty quiet cabin. For the most part, I think this is a solid option in the full-size truck market. If you want something different from, from the domestics or you're a Toyota loyalist, this new Tundra does deliver. You can modify these things, you can throw some bigger tires on them, throw a lift kit, Toyota's gonna have some pretty good aftermarket options uh, for this truck too, and of course, the um, aftermarket is going to be endless from other companies. So I think you can really kind of make these trucks what you want them to be. Super useful, very capable. On a, As far as numbers go, maybe not as good value or as capable as some of the competition. But in the grand scheme of things, if you want a Toyota Tundra, you kind of know you want a Toyota Tundra. And uh, this is a very nice new truck from Toyota. I think they've done a very good job putting this all together. There's some things that I really like about this and uh, really not a whole lot of cons. It's been great to live with and drive this week. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll see you guys in the next video. I think that'll wrap up our coverage on the Toyota Tundra until we get the more powerful hybrid version later this year. Here's the key fob. Pretty basic. Got a button to lock, unlock, and lower the tailgate. Neat. I like how it says Tundra right here too. That's cool. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. We'll see you later.